Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Brendan Ryan. I'm a welding professor for both the welding techniques and the welding technician programs at Niagara College. My presentation today will show us a little bit about our welding labs, um, some of the, the tooling that we have, uh, the welding machines, some of the projects, um, uh, personal protective equipment, things that you're going to be expected to wear when you're uh, in the labs learning to keep us safe. Um, and hopefully you enjoy seeing what we have to offer. So first thing we have here is our welding labs and booths. So here's a picture, it's just a wide shot of one of our labs. We have two welding labs. This is the larger of the two welding labs. Um, it has the majority of our uh, fabrication equipment. So you'll do a lot of your layout and fabrication in this area. Um, it still has their own individual welding booths. So quite a big uh, floor space. Everything is laid out so that we have space in between students to uh, um, also keep everyone safe, but uh, give you a lot of room to work. So it's a, pr a pretty incredible shop. We also have a smaller uh, welding shop that we'll get to look at as well. So in this large shop, you see the on the picture on the left, we can see all the way down the hallway, every person, every student that's gonna be welding in the lab has their individual weld booth. So you can see on the outside of the weld booths, they have their uh, multi-process inverter welding machine. So we can do a variety of different welding with these machines. And you have your own booth, as we said before, plus you can see on the left, we have some uh, piping that has our oxygen and our cutting fuels, everything that we can bring in from a bulk system outside um, that we can have for students to use. So we can do oxyfuel welding, cutting and brazing as well. On the right, we have our grinding room. So we have designated grinding rooms for both labs. So when we're grinding any of our material, the particulate uh, and any dust or anything that's uh, not healthy for us will be um, extracted when we're doing our grinding as well. Here's the other lab that we have. So this is the smaller lab, it's still quite large. We just don't have some of the bigger equipment that you see usually um, in the other lab. But again, individual welding booths, we have a layout area, we have all the tools that we need, all our consumables, and we have uh, also some gases, shielding gases that we can plumb into the system as well. Okay, so we're, we're still in that smaller lab. We have individual welding booths in this as well. You can see we have the multi-process uh, inverter type welding machines outside of everybody's booth. This also has a designated grinding room as well. So everything's about keeping that particulate uh, away from our lungs, which is very nice in both of these labs. So we have some industrial equipment we can talk about as well. So some of the bigger things that we offer here. Uh, on our left, we have a track burner is what we call it. So oxy fuel cutting. Um, so an automated cutting process that we can cut bevels on plate. That's on the left. On the right, we have a 50 ton iron worker. We call it the piranha. So we can do punching, notching, nibbling, um, all kinds of different things. And both labs have a piranha in them. Here is our shear. So we'll take actual full lengths of gauge material up to half inch thick if we needed to. And we can shear these full size sheets into smaller pieces that we'll use um, on the piranha to actually uh, final fit and finish our pieces. On the left here, we have a horizontal bandsaw. Both labs have one of those. So we'll take lengths of channel, pipe, or any tubing, and we can cut those into appropriate sizes as well. On the right, we have our hydraulic brake. So we can do our bending uh, and shaping of our metal. So um, different sizes as well. When we don't have such thick pieces to bend, we actually use the pan brake. So uh, 16 gauge or smaller, we can use the pan brake for that. On the right, we have our abrasive cutoff saw. We also have our drill presses in the corner there as well. On the left in this photo, we have our materials rack. So both labs will have a materials rack. Um, it's laid out so just like any shop in industry, you'll have an area where uh, materials, raw materials will be dropped off. And then you can take those raw materials in their full lengths or their uh, full sheets and cut them to smaller pieces. On the right, we have our uh, plate rollers so we can do intricate circular shapes. Uh, we actually have a project coming up, a mini hot water tank that we would use this piece of equipment for. On the left here, we have pipe beveling equipment because we do uh, pipe welding, shielded metal arc welding on pipe. On the right, we have a pedestal grinder. We have various consumable storage. So we have our electrodes in the cupboard or we have our electrodes in an oven if we're using the low hydrogen electrode types. 
some of the processes that we do. So both these uh, programs, the techniques or technician are, are excellent programs because we give you a variety of welding skills. So we do shielded metal arc welding in all positions. So flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. We'll also do shielded metal arc welding of pipe. Uh, we also have gas tungsten arc welding, which we'll do on mild steel or carbon steel, aluminum and stainless steel as well. We do gas metal arc welding, or some of you may uh, have heard of that as TIG or sorry, MIG welding, flux core welding as well. And on the bottom right, we have oxy fuel welding, brazing, and we do cutting. Speaking of cutting processes, we have oxy fuel cutting. So you can see the picture in the top left, we are using a torch by hand. We uh, talked about the track burner earlier. So we have our oxy fuel track burner on the top right. We do carbon arc cutting and gouging with air. And we also do plasma arc cutting. Here's some of our welding projects. So we'll take different materials. We'll do different layout templates and patterns. And we'll use those, incorporate those in our layout and fabrication classes. So we'll make, uh, you can see the mini hot water tank. We have various squared around templates. We'll do a mini railing. We do all kinds of uh, great projects. On the right, you see our oxy fuel equipment that we would use cutting and brazing and welding. There's a little dice that we can make in our class as well. On the left here, we have some bend coupons. So we'll take your, um, your skills and test them with CWB testing. So uh, no different than an industry when you're looking for your welding tickets. On the right, there's various examples of different weld tests that we'll put students through. We also do a lot of welding on aluminum. We've got some gas metal arc welding on aluminum on the left there on some fillet welds. Here's a couple photos of uh, gas tungsten arc welding on aluminum. We also have it on stainless steel. Here's a torch project, the torch holder project, actually, if you're doing the gas tungsten arc welding process. One of our final projects is the holder that will hold a variety of the torches that we use uh, in the lab. So we'll do uh, TIG torches, uh, gas metal or flux core. We also have the shielded metal arc welding torch. Personal protective equipment for the welding lab. So this is a, a lot of questions we get asked is what are we going to be wearing uh, when we're on campus or when we're in the labs particularly? So this is what you will receive as a student. So whether when you're a first year student, you're going to get CSA approved safety glasses, you're going to get reusable earplugs, you're going to get a fire resistant mask, welding gauntlet gloves, a clear face shield, and Niagara College pro uh, provides these nifty little packs that have um, masks and hand sanitizer for you as well. You'll also be receiving a fire resistant welding jacket. What you are required to bring as a student would be to provide your own CSA approved safety boots as well as CSA approved welding helmet. So we don't provide the welding helmet or your safety boots. And the other thing that you'll also need to provide are just some work pants. So um, I recommend just wearing jeans or denim fabric or heavy work pants can also be uh, worn. So we don't allow you to wear such things as rayon, polyester, anything that can catch fire and melt to your skin. If you wear prescription eyeglasses, you can switch to your clear or uh, switch for safety glasses that fit over your prescription glasses because we don't recommend you wear contacts because again, those things could melt. But we do have a variety of um, safety gear that uh, can um, can uh, allow students to wear their regular glasses. Here's some replacement prices, and I show this to students as well because at the college we're. We want you to be safe, but you want, we want you to be able to uh, easily access replacements. So um, after you're provided with everything first, we have replacements that you can buy. And you can see the prices are pretty uh, low. Um, they're lower than what you'd find in regular retail because everything we sell to the students is at cost. How to wear your personal protective equipment in the labs. So here's a welder on the left, you can see uh, the boots that you would have to provide, your CSA approved safety boots, some jeans, you got your welding jacket on, gloves, the fire resistant mask and your safety glasses. So this is what everyone will look like in the labs when they, they come in the lab to weld. Variations could include your clear face shield, which we're wearing over top. We have our cutting glasses. So when you're doing that oxy fuel welding or cutting, we can switch out the safety glasses. So we have tinted glasses. Here's your shield with your tinted glasses. We also have fire resistant welding hoods. So if anybody is re uh, wearing religious headwear, for example, we can put that over top so that they stay safe. Here's a welding helmet. And you'll notice the next slide, 
you're still wearing your, your glasses at all times and your mask underneath. So that's safety is our number one priority at the college. So welding as well as many other trades, it, it seems intimidating, it seems dangerous, but at Niagara College, we take pride in keeping everyone safe. Uh, we follow the Occupational Health and Safety Act for industrial establishments. So that ensures that students use and apply all safety related tools, personal protective equipment, and follow safe operating procedures. So we, we train you in all the equipment first, regardless if you've had previous training, and then we sign you off so everyone remains safe in the labs. Here's some of our program outlines. So if you're wondering uh, if you're doing one year or the two year diploma program, if you're in the two year, uh, the first year program is exactly the same for both, both uh, streams. It's just when you get to the second year, we take the, uh, the initial skills that you develop and we just increase those skills. So for instance, you'll go to shielded metal arc welding, but you're gonna be in the overhead and pipe. Um, gas metal and flux core will go to horizontal and you'll do some vertical and flux core. And we also get into more codes and standards and more layout and fabrication as well. Uh, we always recommend that if you're unsure, enroll in the two-year program. You can always change your mind, but the two-year program will give you more skills. And I think it's um, uh, beneficial if you're looking at uh, learning more skills in a variety of the processes we have. Um, but the one-year certificate program is excellent to get you an introduction to welding and cutting processes and be comfortable and competent in those processes. Opportunities when you're done with the programs, you can be a welder, you can be an apprentice. Um, so if uh, some of the bonuses from joining the program is if you do have uh, the one year or two years uh, programs under your belt, you can challenge some exams, which if you do become an apprentice later on when you have to do your in-school portion that is required in Ontario, you can actually lessen the time that you have to come back to school to finish those, those classes at night school is what we do at Niagara College. So there's another benefit to taking one or two year programs in the welding. So one year certificate gives you hands-on experience. And again, two year diploma, we're just gonna increase that, uh, that knowledge that you've built on. So welder apprentices are required to complete additional schooling. So this is what I mentioned before. Um, you can write those exemption exams. So for example, if you graduate with a two year diploma from welding technician, you can write the level one and level two exemption exams for welder apprentice if that is the route that you're trying to accomplish. And if you pass them, you only have to complete your year three in school training. Uh, we, have, we also have a special guest today. So Kevin Robichaud is a student in our program, our two-year program. So we've invited him to talk about some of his experience and pass that over to you, Kevin, if you want to talk about a couple things. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Ben. Um, first of all, I just want to say hi to everyone who's attending and I hope that you do make the decision to come to Niagara College and experience it for yourself. Um, the the Rankin Technology Center, where you find the Rankin Lab and NC, is it's one of the the nicest environments to to do this work in, and in Niagara in general, just in fabrication. So, just being able to spend time and work in the shop is is a great pleasure and fun. On top of all the learning that you're going to be doing, um, and going into that, I'd like to talk about uh, you know the support you have with the instructors. Um, it's very you know the communication is always there between the teachers and everyone's at a different skill level coming in and it doesn't matter because we're all going to be learning things together and maybe ditching old bad habits which i'm sure maybe some people come in with um and you really get that guidance to you know it may seem rudimentary at first to do these exercises and then it's like anything else once you get the seat time and you're welding with your lid for hours at a time you start picking things up and it just perpetuates when you have good support with those teachers um which i think is amazing so there's um there's a lot to love about being in school other than just continuously learning um but having the environment it's um very different now with covid i'm sure is just it's you know, it's not the elephant in the room anymore, but uh, the way that NC has been adapting with it, with the teaching and learning plans and the online lessons, it it's almost seamless. It's almost like they've been doing this for a long time. So it's it's interesting. Hopefully, we hope that that's not the situation 
that we're going to have to be dealing with for a long time. But, uh, you know, it is a possibility. So it's it's good to know that no matter the situation, uh, the education is still going to be there. Right. So I think that's really good in terms of the shop. I mean, we saw pictures of it. It's it's a fantastic shop to work in. And I think it's a place that, uh, you know, you could learn a lot, especially outside of the curriculum, you know, if, the more questions you ask and the more things you try, you'll you'll just end up learning them. So it's a fantastic place to to push your skills or to learn new skills. If you never welded before, that's not a problem. If you've never even touched a welder or seen a welder, don't know how they work, it's that's what this is for. So it's uh, it's quite exciting. And I hope to see a lot of new faces in the new year. I don't know if there's anything else we want to be touching on in terms of the presentation or, but I guess we can see if we have any questions at this point. Yeah, we'll keep the questions to the end. Thanks, Kevin. That was awesome. And I really appreciate your input. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. What do you think, Lisa? Are you, do you have a presentation ready for us to view as well? I do have one ready and I enjoyed watching yours actually. <laughs> it was good. Oh, thank you. We have the same equipment. We have a lot of the same theories, you know, safety first and whether you've learned on that machine previously or not, we're still going to show you how we want you to do it and uh, follow our rules and regulations. So yeah, I'm just uh, going to give a minute for my, my slide to, to come up and then we'll, we'll carry on. I, I'm going to kind of walk through the college just a little bit from the beginning, right from the door with my students in my presentation and kind of pretend that I have a student next to me maybe um, asking me a couple questions. So it's an honor to, to be participating in this virtual event today. So here we are um, at Niagara College and uh, I'm Lisa Caruso and I teach in the mechanical techniques program at Niagara College, which is uh, general machining. I like to enter the college from the backside because that's where our technical building is, the Rankin Technology Center, and this is where you'll find. So we're going to head down the hallway and um, we're going to hang a left and we're going to get into the machine shop where the mechanical techniques program takes place. So here we are at the door of the machine shop. So welcome to mechanical techniques program, we have a lovely shop space. As we kind of enter into the shop, you're gonna see a, a bunch of machinery right off the bat. And what are these machines? And what do you do on these machines? So these are our manual lathes, which is where our turning projects will be done. So um, before you can begin working on your turning projects, you'll be given a little bit of a safety test and a once over on things to make sure that you're able to operate this in a safe manner. You have to have a lot of respect for these machines because they can do harm if you're not following the uh, safety guidelines. Benches, we have a bunch of bench vices where we can deburr our work pieces, um, do some layouts. We have a bunch of surface plates where just a nice flat surface for our layout and precision measuring. And of course we have um, the vertical and horizontal band saws. So we start out just as you've seen in the welding um, section where he had all that raw material stacked up. We'll take a piece of raw material and we can cut it to an approximate size where we can further move it over to our manual lathes and milling machines and um, clean things up and finish up those sizes. Once you're done um, your first semester, we introduced the computer numerical control machines. So at this point, because this is a two semester or one year um, program, the mechanical techniques, and by the time you hit your second semester, you're going to have a lot of those manual concepts under your belt. And we will apply those same concepts to the computerized machinery here. And you'll see um, we have a milling machine, just as we had in the manual section. This is fully enclosed, so it does not operate until those doors are closed for safety because it's going to run all on its own. So we will make a program, we'll enter the program into the controller, 
and we will press start and then the machine will continue to do everything that we have programmed it to do. Um, the next slide will show the CNC lathes that we have. So just like the manual, we carry, see these are more common machines that we use. There are different machines, but um, the main part of being a machinist is using lathes and milling machines. So there's a lot of other um, different concepts as well, but these are our go-to machines. So we'll flip to the next slide and carry on to the next. So when we are using the CNCs, um, we have to create the code. So we learn some uh, code. So CNC machine has its own language and um, it's pretty standard across industry and all the different types of machines. They've agreed on a, a language to use with all the CNCs. However, there are still a few that like to stand out on their own and, and do their own thing. And um, so it might get a little complicated going from one of those to these, but typically they will take the G code as well, which is what our CNC code is. So we learn our coding um, manually. Um, we will enter it on either just these learners. So we have extra controllers that are your learners, or we can input them directly at the machinery. And we'll go to the next slide. Um, we also have um, access to software. So master cam is software we use at Niagara College, which allows us to create um, a part. So first by designing and drawing a part and then by applying tool paths. And it's really neat because we can get a, a simulation on our actual cutting before we physically do it. And we get an estimated time on how long it'll take. So it's nice for, um, it's even nice to quote a job or know how long you're gonna take before you do it. Um, this is really good for really complex parts. So the CNC can do more complex 3D items. Um, yeah, so 3D items, CNCs can do, you know, complicated uh, line tangents to arcs and whatnot that might be a little more difficult to obtain with your manual machinery. So we'll flip to the next slide. And tooling. So in the next slide, you'll see a few samples of, so go ahead and flip. The many tools that we have. So we have a, a lot of precision tooling within our lab for measuring, like I said, to within a couple thousandths, thousandths of an inch, the thickness of a hair, which is how I first was introduced to the trade literally was um, my father had taken a piece of hair off of my head and he measured my hair with a micrometer. And I was kind of just wowed by that. He said, it's decimal 007 of an inch. And I was just kind of like, how, how did you measure that? And so that's what a machinist and a tool maker does. That's um, what we have to work within these high tolerances like that. So um, we'll move to the next slide and you'll see some of the more, uh, more of the tools that we have available on the top circle section is showing some of our, our um, lathe tools, our lathe knurling and boring and turning tools. And then on the right side, some of the stuff that we would be using on our manual milling machines and indicators and whatnot as well. So carrying on to the next slide. PPE, very important. Yep, stay right there. That's perfect. Um, PPE, personal protective equipment. Yes, we have to be safe at all times you have to have your PPE on when you're in the machine shop. So go to the next slide and you can see exactly what the college provides for you. Um, your safety glasses, <laughs> right? And so we also uh, supply this smock or shirt that you can wear over your regular clothes, so I guess to kind of keep you clean and kind of the orange signifies that you're from our machining department, a mechanical techniques student. You also get an awesome calculator, the machinist calculator and your own caliper set. So go to the next slide and just like Brendan said, you need to provide your own safety boots in our program as well. And you'll see in the next slide that you will also be supplied with these over the glasses style safety glasses if you uh, wear prescription glasses. Um, in the next few slides, um, we'll talk a little bit more about the program. So, here we are, the Mechanical Techniques Program, one-year certificate program, like I mentioned, which is 
two semesters. Um, do you need any experience beforehand? Not at all. Passion. Show up with your passion. If you've done it in high school or somewhere else, that's an asset to you. Um, once you're done the program, you'll have the building blocks to um, take on an apprenticeship in the machining field. So in the next slide, this is our two terms that we have for this program. Um, we, have, we have our math, our print reading, and then the rest of the um, courses that you see there are your machining and your theory programs. And, and then in term two, we have uh, health and safety communications, and we have that heavy section with the CNC, which is six hours a week. And we have more manual machining and theory as well. So to the next slide. So once you've completed the program, you can quickly move into a trade as an apprentice. So some of the more common machining trades are machinist, tool and die maker. Sometimes you'll see it as a tool maker, a CNC machinist or a mold maker. But there are, there are other trades, but those are the more common. So moving to the next. What is a trade? So yeah, maybe you don't know exactly what a trade is coming um, out of high school. So it's a skilled job and it requires specialty training because most of the skills you're gonna be learning are manual. So typically a trade is on-site training. So once you're done your mechanical techniques program, if you're an apprentice, you will do your on-site training, which is paid. So you're basically learning while you're working and then you attend night school classes. And that's how you end up getting your certificate at the end of your um, apprenticeship. So trades, uh, requires so many hours of um, training as an apprentice before you can become a Red Seal journey person or a certified machinist. So having a pre-trade certificate is a great first step to becoming an apprentice, which is what the mechanical techniques program offers. So to the next slide. So when I look at all of these items on this screen, a machinist had something to do with all of them. And so, in fact, when I start looking around the room that I'm even sitting in, it's hard for me to find something that a machinist didn't have something to do with. So all common household items, anything plastic, steel, um, machinists will make the dies for this or the molds for this. And, you know, it's a very important trade to have. We, we need it. So have a... Give yourself a, a few questions if you're thinking about the machining. Is it a good choice for me? Um, if you answer yes to you know, many of these questions, I would say you would do very well as a machinist. Do you like your hands to work with your hands? Do you like to have an active job? You do need a great deal of patience. Sometimes it's very tricky to get those things exact and you just have to slowly get there. Um, do you take pride in your work? A lot of machinists, when they finish their project, it's like a trophy. We have a lot of gratification in how this turned out. Um, you might be required to do some problem solving. These two parts have to fit. How are you going to make that work? What are the different type of, types of applications you might need to make that work? Uh, attention to detail. Um, being a perfectionist is a really good um, really good thing to be to be a, a machinist. So um, moving on. And this is my last slide. So if you think that machining is a good choice for you, we're going to finish high school, we're going to go to Niagara College, we're going to take the one year program. And then you'll be able to start an apprenticeship and learn um, and earn money at the same time and uh, attend night school at Niagara College to work toward that certificate. Um, complete your apprenticeship, then you're certified and you can go anywhere with that. And it doesn't stop there. It's a very rewarding career where you will have the ability after that point to continue to climb that ladder and move in many different directions. Um, just before I'm done talking, I just wanna point out that they just announced in our program that we're actually starting an intake in May. So, which means we're starting a new program up in May. And so it was literally just put together last week, which is very exciting. And um, yeah, so any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. 
So if you have access to a welding machine outside of school, would you say it would be beneficial to practice out of the program? That's the first question. Yeah, um, I, I guess I'm the obvious choice for that one. Uh, absolutely. It's in the program, we have all the tools and equipment you're going to need, and we do a variety of processes. So uh, shielded metal arc welding or stick welding, we do flux core, or gas metal or MIG, we do, we do all kinds of stuff. But if you do have your own equipment, that's, um, you know, I, I would compare that to practicing any musical instrument. The more time you put into an effort into something, you are going to increase the skills. The nice thing about having equipment, if you do have your own, um, you can be practicing the same things that we're going to be going over in the lab. So one thing we don't uh, allow is we don't want you to take your projects home and, and do them at home. You do them in the lab space. We grade them. We talk about them. We evaluate. Um, so that would be what we'd be concentrating in the school. But if you're at home and, and you have the opportunity to increase the hours, it, it will definitely just increase your skill set. And um, uh, we have students, a variety of students that sometimes uh, excel at different levels or do have previous experience, we'll still challenge you. I'll still challenge you. I'll come up with something else that's more challenging if you're finishing your projects and we still have some time before the term's uh, done. Let's, let's increase those skills further. So excellent question. Perfect. Thank you so much, Brendan. Hopefully that answered your question, Alex. The other question is from Fred. He states, I have nine years machinist experience manual. What I don't know is CNC, would you advise I read many machinist technician programs or should I go for mechanical engineering technology? Um, well, in our CNC section, like I said, it's six hours a week, which is, which is pretty intense. And I have seen a little bit of what the mechan mechanical engineering students are doing. Um, I, if you've researched that program, that program goes on for, I think it's for two or three years. So it's a bit of a longer program. And they focus a little more on design. They do have a lot of um, time on Mastercam compared to us. So they do a lot of design work and they have some of these small desktop CNC um, machines that they don't put out an awful lot of projects, but they do get to practice on. Whereas in our program, so of course I think that our CNC program runs really well. Like I, um, I think it's fantastic and I love it, like six hours a week. So we have one hour a week, totals 42 hours. It's quite a bit of CNC training. Um, even compared to other colleges, um, we do 42 hours a week. So half of that, three hours, or sorry, 42 hours in the, in the term. Half of that is three hours a week actually on the CNC machines where you physically program parts and run. So you actually run four different parts that you have programmed on the CNC machines. So. I think you I think you gain a lot um, in our mechanical techniques program from the CNC. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lisa. Hopefully that answered your question, Fred. Um, there was a question in the chat that was really good. I believe Brennan answered, but I'll repeat the question for the others who haven't seen it. So this question asks, how many hours, this is for the welding techniques program, how many hours per week would a typical class or shop week be? Uh, great question. So uh, we have all kinds of different um, courses going on throughout the week. So sometimes you might be doing your health and safety class. You might be doing your layout and fabrication class. You might be doing engineer drawing. So uh, for example, health and safety, you're going to have an hour a week doing that in your class, but each process will have a mix. So shielded metal arc welding will be five hours in the lab during the week. Plus you'll also have your one hour of theory with that. And that's just one process. You'll also be doing gas metal or MIG welding that that same term, which will also be three, I believe three or five hours in lab. And then you still have your one hour of theory. So I, just to grab an, uh, a number, I believe it'd be around 20 plus hours a week of learning. And the majority of that will be hands-on. Perfect, thank you so much, Brendan. Another question that came in from Asibor, he's asking studying welding and fabrication and having experience in mechanical technique, can you also study the program and have certificate in it? Yeah, I, it's kind of hard to understand that question, but if you already have previous certification, uh, um, you will learn a, a whole lot of, uh, of different information. We get some students that previously were welders or were uh, in a different form of the trade, some kind of trade, even uh, industrial mechanics, something like that, and, and they're looking to increase their skill set. Um, the, the benefit to the one or two year program is the variety of skills you're going to use. There's welders out there that can weld 
uh, for 20, 20 hours a week or more or 44 hours a week or more and they're just doing one process of welding or they're not doing any fitting. So um, you could be an excellent welder, but we do offer a more well-rounded uh, approach to various processes and techniques to cut and shape and fit metal. So um, my own experience, I, I, I am a graduate of the two-year program here. I'm also, uh, uh, I've completed my apprenticeship, so I'm a journey person welder. Um, the biggest benefit I, I received was no matter what experience I had, I had previous construction experience, um, no welding, but it gave me the confidence to get out there in, into the job market and, and take on any any role that was offered to me or try something different. So for example, I was in a shop that had multi-processes. Um, there were people that were uncomfortable doing uh, the wire feeding processes. I had experience in that. I could take that and run with that in the shop. So um, no matter what your experience level, if you're looking to learn more, this it's a good opportunity, um, especially for uh, increasing your skills if you want to take it to the next level if you're looking for an apprenticeship. Uh, Lisa's presentation was great explaining these are um, really good skills to have and then take that out there and get your apprenticeship and keep keep learning. So I'm just going to add to that, um, Brendan. So when you're done the mechanical techniques program, you get a certificate, but it is not your certificate as a machinist. So once you get this certificate, then you have to carry on through an apprenticeship in order to get the actual certification of becoming, and that lasts three to four years, depending on what trade you choose. To be a certified tradesperson, you need to continue on a little more. Kevin, now if you've been watching this, is there anything you want to add as a student perspective? Anything you could think of? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, you touched a little bit on the diversity, um, and I see a lot of people are kind of curious about, you know, what's going to happen, but. Uh, in the welding program, we have a mechanical repair technology course, which it doesn't go very deep in it, but we do spend some time in the machining shop that Lisa was showing us. Um, and we have some small projects that we touch on. <clears throat> and I think it's it's just great to, to get that exposure. And like Brennan was talking about having more experience. I mean, I, I've had a very, bad welder since I was about 17 and I've done some odd things with it questionable things um as I grew older I got into cars and once again did a lot of questionable things which at the time I just simply didn't know because I had no any formal theory knowledge about anything it was basically just like my thinking of it being good and now learning this it's it's given me more than just skill but it's given me confidence um when you look at other people's work or you look back on your work, uh, it just opens your eyes to realizing there's a lot more to every process. And there's so many specialty uh, divisions in the trades, especially with welding. You could be, like Brennan said, working one welding process for some people do it for years and they, they could do perfect, you know, small welding or stick welding. And they have never touched uh, a gas tungsten arc welding or TIG welding uh, torch in their life. So I think it's great that it you're not going to use everything. If you do, great. But there's a good chance a lot of these things, it's you're not going to be having a job where you use all of the processes we offer at the school. And I'm sure there is, but uh, it kind of covers everything. And it covers it to where you could understand it and feel comfortable with it. And feeling comfortable with a torch, cutting torch or gouging, um, you know, welding processes, shearing, bending. Um, I mean, it could be intimidating using the big accu shear we have in the shop. I mean, it's it's bigger than the room I'm sitting in right now, and you know, you have to be careful. So it puts you, it, it makes you uncomfortable at times. But I think being un uncomfortable and facing that fear and getting that experience is is how you'll grow. So yeah, overall, I think it's just uh, it's it's all how you take it too. I mean. Um, your attitude coming in and your willingness to learn it will have a huge impact and communicating with your peers and your classmates you know we keep in touch with each other especially with the hybrid learning uh, we're group chats and reminding ourselves of assignments so uh, there is that sense of camaraderie and I'm, I'm sure when we graduate uh, you know we'll keep in touch and you know maybe hopefully be able to go to have a drink or two if that's an option then but uh, I'm sure you'll meet some friends along the way and uh, the learning is so diverse and honestly with the small time I had in the machining shop I 
I wish I, you know, would have taken the the time to do more schooling when I was younger, because now it's, uh, you know, I could have been doing both programs, but uh, it's very interesting. And it's, uh, there's always more learning opportunities there too, which is great. And it's all transferable skills to the, to the trade. A lot of things you will learn on, uh, in, on the field, which sounds intimidating at first. People always say, you know, the, the work field is different and you're going to learn things that are different, but uh, learning it right and having the respect for these processes and understanding the dangers will make sure you have a safe working experience, but also offer you a good working experience. So yeah, that's, I'll, I'll leave it on that. And I think that pretty much sums a good part of it up there. That was good to hear, Kevin. You know what? I think that we take a lot of pride in um, making sure that students overcome the intimidation of these large and dangerous machines and make sure that they have that confidence. Like that to me is a win when mm -hmm. the student is feeling the, that confidence because it's something you have to overcome. And boy, what a feeling when you do. Yeah, it's uh, being scared in an environment like that. Um, could it, it could almost be unsafe if you don't feel comfortable. Um, because then you have to be aware of the right things at all times. And uh, it just helps you stay active and on your feet. And uh, to me, that I like that feeling. I get very bored. So I like high stress situations or dangerous situations <laughs> where you have to double check things and triple check things. And uh, to me, that's a thrill because when you accomplish it, there's much more reward than just something very simple like hammering a nail into wood, you know? Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, thank you. Good job, Kevin. That's a lot of good info. Appreciate it. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. I believe Derek uh, wanted to add a point or two as well. Uh, yes. I, so basically, I, I didn't study the program in particular, but my father actually graduated from Niagara College as a general machinist, and he he's a journeyman as well. And and this was when you know I was a baby, and he began he began working the sector. And just to kind of give some context about. His, his, his experience has been in the Niagara region itself and working as a machinist after graduating from Niagara College. Uh, basically, uh, following graduation, he, he started his apprenticeship and he started taking night schools, the, the whole plan that was presented already uh, by Lisa. And, and essentially, uh, he started working for a few different machine shops just to let everyone know that the sector itself uh, in the Niagara region, it, it equivalents to... It, it, produces about $1.7 billion for the region uh, and around 17 to 25,000 jobs. It's, it's, it's a quite a big sector. And, uh, and, and essentially he uh, began working in a couple of machine shops. He was working quite, quite hard. And then he eventually found uh, his, his machine shop that he dedicated all his time to is a, it's a machine shop uh, just in Niagara region in Beamsville. Uh, it's called Claybell Canada. And uh, he began, he was a CNC programmer there. And uh, eventually after uh, acquiring some time in the shop, they would send him to go purchase uh, machinery as well. So they would send him to Asia, to Japan, to, to China, et cetera. And now he's the, uh, the machine shop manager. So he runs the, the whole machine shop in, in, uh, for Clay, uh, this company called Claybell Canada. And essentially they make precision tooling for uh, fire and reclaimed water applications, aviation fueling. And so it's, it's funny, Lisa was telling some of her stories as a, as a child with her dad, and I had some similar stories as well. So I found it quite interesting. So that, that's basically the, my, my take on, on the sector as well. A machine shop for me, uh, the smell of a machine shop is almost like a second home. It's a, it's a unique environment, and I've always been acquainted uh, to, to the machines and all the, like, the, the CNC machines and lading equipment. So it's a, it's, it was exciting to be part of this presentation here. Thanks for that, Derek. I, I, uh, I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you so much, Derek, for that awesome, uh, you know, feedback and also for your, to share your experience with your dad and Lisa as well, and Brendan and Kevin, you guys are amazing. I can hear the passion in your voices when you talk about the program, the Niagara College, and it's really appreciated. Um, did we have any other questions from the audience? We have, I believe, two more minutes to go. So do we have any more questions? I believe, Devin, you're asking about um, exploring other programs um, at the college. If you want to talk more about the other programs we have, you can connect uh, with us directly. Lisa is also answering it right now for you. 
Does anyone else have any questions, any more comments? Um, Kevin, do you want to talk about how you found your transition? Because you mentioned the IBID program. How did you find your transition? Like any advice you can give to anyone at the moment regarding that? Um, yeah, it's, um, if I could sum it up in one word, it would be blackboard. Um, just, I, right here, I have, I have my schedule that I've made. I had, to, I'm a naturally always been kind of an unorganized person. So this has been a struggle for me, but it's been something I've been needing to learn in my life at one point. Um, so what I do is I'll check Blackboard for every class. Um, I actually, all, all of my, this is something that helped me great. Uh, all of the teaching and learning plans. I don't know if you could see with my background. Yes. I have every teaching and learning plan printed out. So any given week you can go through, sorry, it's not working well with the background, but um, having them printed out saves you from having to click 20 times just to see what material you should be studying that week, especially when you have uh, many classes and um, there's not much theory to learn. Like the, it's a very short period of time that you're gonna be doing the studying, but making sure you're studying the right thing can be a little bit daunting with the hybrid program. So um, making an at-home schedule that incorporates my class time and learning the teaching and learning plan and having it available um, really helps. And then Blackboard is, um, you'll be on Blackboard every day, make sure it's bookmarked. And if it's not, your browser is gonna remember it. So <laughs> it's, um, it's interesting, but it's all manageable and it just forces us to get outside of our comfort zone and experience more, which honestly in this day and age, if you're not comfortable navigating online stuff, I mean, it's, it's pretty tough given the circumstances. So I think it's necessary skills that we have to learn with the way the world is going. So I think it's, it's maybe a blessing in disguise, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin. Definitely. Um, it does teach you how to be a bit more organized. That is for sure. And also how to adapt because you seem to be adapting quite well and you're doing really, really well. We have to welcome changes at time. But like I mentioned before, we are anticipating um, returning to campus for fall 2021. And updates will be on our website. So if you do want to see what your program status will look like in terms of delivery, take a look at our website on the niagaracollege.ca slash COVID-19. If you have any questions, you can connect with us directly via the chat. You can have one-on-one -on -one session with a recruiter near you and Ryan, uh, Brendan, Lisa, and I'm sure Kevin at some point uh, will be more than happy to answer any questions that you have after today's session. Again, thank you so much for attending our session. Hope you learned a great deal from the faculties and from also our guest speakers for today. Again, stick around, see all the other sessions. If you have any questions, join our live chat on the website. Have a great uh, rest of your evening and enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Thanks, bye now. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye.